Hello, and welcome to this week's episode of Bolt Action Reloading. In this week's episode, we're going to be covering the Skeleton Carbine Stock by MDT. Stick around. Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here and you'd like to see how I and the rest of me here make our group smaller, start now by subscribing to the channel and hitting the bell icon. That way you get notified when I post next week's video and you won't miss anything. Today's video is all about our MDD modular buttstock that you see here on the table. The part number we're talking about specifically is the 102856-BLK. I believe if you look up this part, it's technically referred to as a skeleton carbine stock. The reason why we're going over this today is strictly because we're in the middle of upgrading our 308. I was going to use some of the stock equipment on it for a while. The factory butt stock that came with our 308 is a Magpul CTR. It's not that it's bad. However, one of the biggest issues we've ran into so far is vertical stringing in our groups. I am very certain with the drastic angle of the factory butt stock, when the rifle is recoiling, it's causing the elevation change on our rear bag. It isn't being helped by the fact there isn't a muzzle brake on it right at the moment, but we're going to be solving that problem too. But today's video is about the butt stock. I wanted to go over the butt stock and some of the reasons why we chose it. We're really not going to do the install on it, but we're going to show you the before and after and kind of compare the various butt stocks and why we ended up with this option. First of all, a lot of things that's going to come into play is preference. This particular stock is not going to be the cheapest stock you can find by any stretch of the imagination. To be perfectly honest, I was looking for a stock that I hadn't tried before, and I was also looking for a stock that would ride my bag very well. One of the options that comes with this stock is actually this bag rider. I'm probably not going to end up covering this in a separate video. It's pretty basic. Uh, this angle bolts on with two screws to the bottom, and that's going to provide us a very flat surface to ride our bag. It should be reducing the vertical string that we've been seeing in our groups. One of the other things that really pushed me down this road is the length. One of the other obvious options for our rifle might have been this Magpul PRS Gen 3 stock. I actually have two of these already. I don't mind the stocks. They provide a reasonable bag rider surface here. It has a slight angle on it, but certainly much better than the factory stock that we're dealing with. The one thing that I really don't particularly like about this stock is it adds a significant length to the stock. Well, when we get the rifle all tore apart, I'm going to take some pictures that we're going to throw on the screen so we can kind of show you the difference between all of these stocks. Deciding we didn't want to go with the Magpul PRS stock again, we wanted to keep that overall length a little bit shorter. Who's to say we won't move this to another rifle and swap something around eventually? But I'm very excited to try this stock out and get it adjusted. If I'm reading the documentation correctly, this stock weighs about 1.4 pounds. Another interesting feature, it has a 1.5 inch toolless adjustable vertical adjustment as well as a 10 degree cant. The cheek riser height is 1.5 inches. The cheek riser height is adjustable as well as most importantly, there's, locks, there's screws on each side to lock in the setting if you choose to do so. Just with the adjuster, it's actually pretty solid, way better than some of the plastic stocks that I've had. but. Uh, once I get adjusted exactly where I want it, I'm guessing I probably will lock that in to some degree. Same's going to go for our rear adjustment. And there are Allen screws on there that you can screw down to lock that in place so it, it's going to be solid. Not that it's extremely bad loose. Uh, certainly, I think that we could shoot it, get it adjusted, make an adjustment, see how we like it. But it really had all the adjustability and all the features that I wanted to. The price was a little bit higher than I paid for it. Occasionally, you can find coupon codes and such deals that at least it makes the price a little bit more palatable. You're certainly paying for quality, and that's one thing I usually really don't mind in paying for. I don't want to insinuate that all other stocks are inferior to this. However, this is one of the higher quality options. If you guys know of any other alternatives, I'd love to hear about them in the comment section below. But this was one of the ones I was most excited to try. I think it has checks all the boxes. It's certainly not too heavy. Its overall length isn't too bad. All important features for me, and I think is going to get our 308 program going in the right direction. As much as I'd like to walk you guys through the process, it's really not that difficult. I'm just going to accomplish it off camera. I'm going to take some pictures midway so you guys can kind of get a comparison for the stock I'm taking off, the stock that we're replacing it with, and I'll pull out some of the other stocks that you can compare it to. I think that this would have been a fine replacement for our 110BA platform, as well as our Ruger Precision Rifle, not just our Aero Precision Ordnance 308. But let's get it on, let's get some comparisons out there, and we'll come back and talk about it. And through the magic of video, here we are, everything's back installed again. To be honest with you, I did forget to take the pictures I was going to take comparing all of the stocks, so we're going to do the best we can after the fact to make sure we get our point across. In my case here, unfortunately, it took a little bit more than our wrench 
to get our stock off. After we got our lock nut off, our old stock had actually been Loctited in. I'll try and take a close up picture so you guys can see the residue on the CTR stock, but not always with the case that you'll find it, at least not usually the case. But it took a little bit of heat to remove the Loctite that they'd used. Got it off without a whole bunch of issue. Got our new stock on and Loctited in on. And then I remembered that I hadn't taken the photos. So uh, it is what it is. You guys should be able to see uh, the stock in place. We do have the bag rider on. Now that I've got the bag rider on, it's pretty clear. The bag rider is going to be great for going to the range and shooting that. Um, but if we do do any walking around hunting with this rifle, that bag rider is probably going to come right back off uh, just because it has a tendency to uh, bump into my arm when I'm carrying it around. But your mileage may vary. Uh, certainly one piece of feedback I would give you. But again, that's an option you have to buy. It doesn't come with it. Um, let's just do some quick comparisons on our stock here. For the purpose of the last review, let's be clear that this is actually the 9 and 3 quarters model. I'll put a shot of the part number up on your screen. It's a 102856-BLK. I actually ordered this quite a while ago from Brownells. When looking at the options for this when I ordered it, there was an 8 and 3 quarter, 9 and 3 quarter, 10 and 3 quarter, and 11 and 3 quarter inch option. They were certainly a key to what fits what. If I can find a screenshot of that, I'll throw it up. The only applications I was looking for is not an AR-15 or AR-10. This is simply for my bolt action rifles. Well, you certainly could use it with an AR, assuming you had the right length and the compatible springs and spacers that are required for that application. This is the 102856-BLK. It's nine and three quarters. Having the different length options was one of the things that really attracted to me to this stock, along with the, having the option for the bag rider. Just to walk through our stock examples here, we can see this is the uh, CTR stock from Magpul um, at its shortest length. So you can see it can get a little bit shorter than our MDT stock, not a significant amount. Under full extension, it gets to be a little bit longer. This is longer than I needed. If in case you're not familiar with the channel, know that I have a couple Ruger Precision Rifles that we've went over many times on the channel. I have a Magpul PRS stock on that, one of these Gen 3s, and we're going to pull the rifle out here in a second here just for a comparison. Initially, when I swapped the stock out on that, I kind of followed the crowd, the Magpul PRS stock. I'm not saying anything bad about it. It's a good stock. The Magpul PRS stock's around 250 This is MSRP around 350 Though if you find sales coupon codes, you can get it down a little bit, though it's still not going to be free. And like I said, this uh, our bag rider is going to be an extra option if that's something you're looking for. You can probably ride a bag a little bit with the standard stock. Um, it's certainly going to give you a little bit more than the CTR Magpul stock, but uh, the bag rider really is a nice option, and I that's what I was looking for, even though it did cost a little bit more money. One of the things I really like about the stock is its adjustability. Uh, it's not just an elevation increase on here. You can loosen two screws, and you can actually slide this cheek piece back and forth quite a bit. So it can go back another inch from where it is all the way to the front. Uh, depending on where you want to do your cheek rest, uh, I did adjust it back about a half inch from where it was placed from the factory. Kind of the competitors for this stock is certainly going to be any of your standard Magpul. Um, if you're shooting off a bag, like I said, the, C the CTR stock, really not a consideration. This may sound kind of funny coming from me, but if you have somebody that has a Ruger stock that they've taken off because they just had to put that PRS stock on there, I really do think this is a reasonable option for the stock. Um, it's it's not perfect. There are bag rider adapters that you can buy for this, though you might just as well buy this. By the time you pay for the bag riders, at least that I've seen, they're available for this. Um, they don't seem to be a very budget option, but this does have a reasonable flat on it, so you can ride a bag at least a little bit. It's got a pick rail. I'm not going to be the one to tell you a rear monopod is going to be the answer because uh, I've seen a lot of mixed reviews. And so had I not already actually had this stock because I, I bought this for my second RPR, I was actually starting to like the stock a little bit more for the RPR. And so I left it on there. I might move it depending on what rifle I spend more time with. I certainly plan on spending some time here with the 308 on the channel. It's not that I don't like the PRS stock, but I certainly did have to change because of the length of pull change. I did have to change my scope mounting. I'll show that in one more second. The last stock I wanted to kind of give you guys for comparison was this FOB Defense. This came on my 338 Lapua, which I also have put a Magpul PRS stock on. So like I said, I have two of them. It's not like I don't like the stock. It adds some length to the RPR that I'm not as fond of. Anything that's going to be this AR style, you're going to have more adjustment range than you're going to have on the MDT stock. A lot of it's going to come down to personal preference, and I realize a $350 stock is not going to be everyone's first choice. I found as a lot of things, if you go spend $250 on the Magpul PRS stock and you're not really fond of it, uh, you might as well have spent the extra $100 at that point in time. Again, I'm not saying this is the one you have to get. Do your research. Make sure you like the option you have. Let's get it out, and you can kind of get a comparison 
So guys, hopefully you can get a little bit of a feeling and understand the the overall length. Like I said, the, the Magpul PRS stock, it does have adjustments so you can make the stock longer. However, in a lot of applications I've seen, uh, it's already plenty long enough. I moved my scope a little bit further back from the initial position that I'd installed it just because it added so much extra length to the rifle. Hopefully you guys can see a little bit of a comparison on there. You know, obviously that has shrunk in all the way and it, this stock can expand quite a bit. It's got a lot of adjustment to it. So guys, I've lined them up pretty much as straight as I can. If you put our tape measure up, you can see that's where our nine and three quarter inch overall length comes from, from the MTT stock. In comparison, the, the shortest length that we're going to be able to get on our Magpul PRS stock is the 11 and three quarter option. MDT offered one that was an inch shorter than this, all the way to that basically 11 three quarter option that the Magpul PRS stock is. And keeping in mind, it still has an, you know, that additional inch of adjustment. So if you wanted that a full 11 and three quarter inch length, or you have an application that requires that, you can have the long one, but in my application, we're not running anything in the buffer tube. It's just there for a stock. I wanted to be able to have that shorter option that I just couldn't get with the Magpul PRS stock. It's going to give us the more level bag rider. But not only do you get the possibility on this stock of adjusting for height, but you can also adjust it exactly where you want that cheek weld to be. So, so far I'm really happy with this MTT stock. Whether it's worth the money for you, I guess that's going to be something you're going to have to decide for yourself. It's going to be a more expensive option. I do think it's a nicer option. But if the PRS is going to check all the boxes for you, I don't think there's anything wrong with it either. If you have any questions about the stock, make sure you put those in the comment section below. If you want to keep up with our project here on the channel, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell icon so you get notified when I post next week's video. If you're new to the channel here, try and check out one of these videos that YouTube thinks you're going to enjoy. I hope to see you back next week. And until then, stay safe in small groups.